at the time when the world community is saying to the United Nations, this issue of climate change is the most serious problem which confronts mankind. The tourism sector is an important part of society. We are one of the world's largest industries. And therefore we have, as a sector, irrespective of the United Nations, we have to make a, a response as a good global citizen, making the point that climate change is no longer an issue for discussion. As Luigi's slide shows, it's risen to the top of the geopolitical agenda. And therefore, we have an obligation to, um, to move forward on it as our most important item. Without drastic reduction of global greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, then much of civilization as we know it will be irrevocably changed, in some cases destroyed. That's the central message. If we start now, and do all of the things that are necessary, very hard things, but if we do all these things, it might cost us 1% of global GDP. But if we wait, and we wait, say, till the mid-2020s, it might cost us 25% of global GDP. The paradigm has changed. It's changed fast in the last six months. It's changed irrevocably. At the UN Assembly in September, a hundred heads of state made a commitment to come to Bali at the end of the year in their national sovereign capacities and in effect renegotiate the continuation in a more aggressive form of the Kyoto Agreement. But this week in, in Australia there was an election a new prime minister was sworn in. He won the election, some people say, on the climate change issue because Australia's economic position has never been stronger. And his first act internationally is to go to Bali to sign the Kyoto Convention. And, it's my and we know there are problems of the big developing countries like China, like India, who are rightly saying, who are rightly saying, you've created the problem, rich countries, you're the polluters, and now you're telling us we can't develop because there's a big problem of pollution. What we have done is we've marshaled the industry. In Davos, since in October, we brought in 450 stakeholders, public, private, NGOs from around the world, and we crafted a declaration, and we're calling it the Davos Declaration. It wasn't just WTO, it was WTO with the United Nations Environment Program and the World Meteorological Organization, the environmental activists and the scientists. And it was done with the World Economic Forum. That's why we did it in Davos. The Davos Declaration basically says, and Luigi touched on some of the points, we have to do four things. We have to mitigate, that's a bureaucratic word, which means we have to use less carbon. We have to decouple our growth from our carbon emissions. We have to adapt, which means we have to change practices in every way we can to reduce our reliance on carbon and to take account of the coming climate change impacts. We have to innovate with new technology because that's how particularly poor countries will make the leap forward. And we have to find the finance for the poor countries that can bring them on board to this and it'll take hundreds of millions of dollars. But we have to find it because without it, people will die, people will walk across borders, security will be threatened, and the world will be a rather nasty place to live in. And the last point I want to make, through the 90s, many of us were involved in the adaptation of the industry to the green movement, to the idea of, of um, sustainable tourism rather than just tourism. 
we coined the word, people coined the word, triple bottom line. It means you can't just worry about the economy, you have to take into account the social and the environmental aspects of growth. We now believe that we have to talk in terms not of triple bottom line, but of quadruple bottom line. We believe that climate has to be added to this concept of sustainable tourism growth.